selkie dresses, pumpkins, and my first ever Halloween costume. What do they all have in common? I mean, other than me wanting to wear them on my body. That's correct. They are often, but not always, round in shape. Which is why I made an immediate connection between these concepts whenever my audience started relentlessly asking me to make a pumpkin inspired thing. So fine, I'll do it. I'll make a pumpkin dress. This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Whether you need hosting for your art portfolio, blog, or online store, Squarespace has all the website building, marketing, and analytics tools you need to build a sleek website and grow your brand. So this video is a bit of a throwback because today is actually my birthday. So I thought it would be fun to, first of all, get you guys to stop asking me to make a pumpkin thing, and second of all, recreate, in a way, my first ever Halloween costume, but for a 24-year-old Kira, because as cute as this costume is, it is not the most flattering garment. I like to think my fashion has evolved a little bit since then. This is cheating a little bit because I designed this in a previous video, but when has that stopped me before? So before we get started, let's get a bit of a refresher on that design. Hush, hush, hush. Here comes the bogeyman. As long as I've been aware of their existence, I wanted a selkie dress. I love them so much, but alas, I cannot afford one. Now, ideally for a pumpkin dress, I think the baby doll style dress would sell the silhouette the most, but as an individual who is shaped a little less like a Pixar mom and a little more like Captain America, I do not prefer raised waistlines. So today we're going for inspiration and not full plagiarism in the design as a cute mini dress with a full pumpkin skirt, poofy pumpkin sleeves, a waistline that falls just above my natural waist, and a ruffled bust with a bunch of cute ribbons to emulate a pumpkin stem. Like selkie dresses, I'm gonna go for a soft, reflective, lightweight material for maximum frolicking potential, so I'm going to try to get some orange crystal organza for the dress and probably a poly satin for the ribbons. Okay, now that you've seen what the design looks like, it's time to go and gather some materials. Did you say design? Hey, it's kind of rude to interrupt people. Speaking of garment designs, this video is sponsored by Squarespace. Oh, here we go. In my last Squarespace ad, I said this. Before I publish, I'll also probably add a portfolio page for my actual garment designs, because why not? And in the time since that video, I've done exactly that. Because Squarespace offers dozens of professional and customizable website and portfolio templates that make it super easy to create a portfolio site and fill it with all the personalization you want. I'm a maximalist, so I want as much visual clutter in my portfolio as humanly possible. In the past, that's been pretty buggy with a couple of the services I've tried. But Squarespace offers tons of easy customization, like text, color, and even website pages, which is good because I <laughs> like adding them. For my costume design portfolio, all I had to do was add another gallery page, drop in my design and final result photos, and features like automatic image scaling ensured that my pieces would be automatically beautifully arranged with zero tedious effort. And when you make these various pages, like my convention portfolio, you can also password protect them so that only the intended recipients can view them. And if you're an artist wanting to sell your wares online or at conventions, Squarespace has all the tools you need because they also have a great e-commerce platform which can be linked to a print-on-demand service so that it's totally hands-off. And Squarespace is also great if you sell in person like in Artist Alley because when you do so using their app, your inventory and sales data are kept in sync with your online store. So if you want to launch your own overly complicated portfolio, head to squarespace.com for a free trial and when you're ready to launch, head to squarespace.com slash pricklyalpaca to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thank you so much to Squarespace for sponsoring this week's Impulse Project. Now let's get back to that gourd dress. Okay, now let's move on to buying materials. Get in, loser, we're going shopping. Only no, actually, we didn't go shopping. Because every attempt I made to purchase orange crystal organza fabric locally failed tremendously. Let's take a look. So first I went on a journey to Joanne Fabrics with the lovely Shiloh who didn't know I was filming here, I'm sorry. That Joann's is like 50 minutes from my house, so I had really hoped they'd have what I was looking for. An employee was even kind enough to check the back for me, but alas, orange was the only crystal organza shade they didn't have. But Shiloh did find an entire decor aisle tailored to her aesthetic taste, so I'd say the trip was a success. Shiloh, did you find your aesthetic? I'm home. So next I tried the Hobby Lobby, and they were closed the day I went, so. and made a phone call. I just called the Hobby Lobby, no dice. So Etsy it is. Well, I did it. I just hope this comes in time because I am nervous. <laughs> I'm 
I now have all of my materials. The only thing I didn't manage to obtain over the past three weeks of shopping around is the ribbons that go on the shoulder and the back and tie up the back and I don't know, they're pretty important. I went to Hobby Lobby last night and they weren't open, so I don't really know what to do about that. Oh wait, what do we have here? This could work. <sighs> So the order for the day is basically that I have to pattern this entire thing. And I have less than two hours to get some decent progress on the patterning because I'm hanging out with some friends for my birthday tonight and I have to be somewhere at 5.30 p.m. So, uh, not a lot of time. Some of the pieces for this I'm just going to repurpose. But some of it I am going to have to pattern from scratch, which scares me a little bit. But I have been watching several of Paper Stars videos on how they made their selkie dresses, which has been just so much help. It has been the difference between me having somewhat of a game plan and going in essentially completely blind and having a little bit of a panic attack. So let's start by draping that bodice. To pattern this gourd shaped frock, I began by draping a pattern for the bust section of the bodice since I didn't have a pre existing pattern for this. And since the pattern was pretty simple for the bodice, I just extended it down and drew some seam lines for the waist section as sloppily as humanly possible. Anyways, I removed that and I only patterned half of it so I could fold the fabric and mirror my pattern. So I tried that on and I felt like I had a few changes to make. So I ended up recutting the mock up, making the neckline lower, the waistline longer, and just recycling the back from my leaf dress. The skirt section is just as simple as can be. It's just a circle skirt, so I measured myself, divided my waist measurement by pi to get my waist diameter, decided on a length, patterned it out, cut it out, and bam, there's a circle skirt. For the sleeve, I winged it a bit and just traced a normal sleeve pattern, but bigger and chonkier. Don't know where my ruler is, can't find it, so I'm going to use a piece of steel boning instead. And after all that was cut out and fit pretty well, we more or less had a pattern. Oh, and if by we, you think I'm referring to you and I? Um, no, you're wrong. I'm referring to myself and my numerous clones. Hello, it is now the next day. So as you can see, because I didn't give myself that much time, I wasn't able to get much done last night, but I was able to go earlier today, finish up the mock-up, get the pattern pieces fitting pretty nicely. Now, it's cutting time. So when I say that this took a while, it is by far the longest I've ever spent cutting. Oh dear lord. So long in fact that I probably have a minute of time-lapsed footage here of just cutting. What am I supposed to do with all of this? I think I hear the executive producer. Hello. By the end, I had just enough organza to really layer up everything, at least by three layers. I was able to cut three long rectangular layers to gather for the skirt along with a circle skirt layer, and I even managed to cut three layers for the sleeves, which I was quite pleased with. Oh yeah, this is what I felt like afterwards. So much cutting. I am exhausted. I finally got everything cut out. It took literal hours because each piece has between four and six layers. Oh, okay, ow. That was actually painful. Good producer. So now, let me take you through all of the pieces and just how many layers all of them have. Can we maybe- Hey, can we not do that? Please stop. So, um, excuse me. So I ended up using this as a lining, the white as sort of like an underneath layer so that whenever I layer up the orange pieces, it actually looks orange Ow. Here we have all the bodice pieces. Each of these have three layers of the organza on top and then white underneath. And then for like the pleating on the like bust part, I just like made this really, really long. And then I'm going to pleat this in the center. And for the skirts, we have one, two, another three underneath here somewhere and then four five and six layers <laughs> madam that's not for you so the next steps are to baste all of the organza down and then start assembling the individual layers and it is currently 8 p.m so i don't have a ton of time to do this just because i do have to get up kind of early tomorrow morning so i think for my own sanity if i get the individual layers assembled tonight i will be pretty happy with that progress and i can just focus on finishing everything else up tomorrow let's baste 
since basically every piece had multiple layers, this frankly took years off my life, but at least the executive producer took great interest in this part of the project. I think it was just the thrill of having so many different seating options on the floor, but for as boring as some of this was, at least I had Seinfeld and my cat to keep me company. And pinning down the ruffles on the bust made me feel like an actual seamstress. I mean, look at this. Every time I get to do a fancier technique like this, I'm just like, oh yes, uh, thank you for asking. I did win season 246 of Project Runway, and my collection is launching this spring. <coughs> Anyways, the higher-ups really came down hard on me for taking too long on this step, so my boss decided to keep a closer eye on me while I attached the individual layers. This is always such an exciting process, like I, I made a thing and those shapes that were on the floor are now on my body. What is this witchcraft? Anyways, I sewed both layers and pressed all my seams to make this start looking like an actual garment. And after doing some fittings on the outer and lining layers, Alright, the individual layers are now combined and I still have a little bit of steam left in me so I think tonight I'm going to try to work on the skirt at least a little bit. It does have a lovely six layers and three of those layers are just rectangles of organza so I need to gather those with some thread so that I can actually make them match up to the circle skirts that I've already made. I'm gonna try to do that and then who knows maybe I'll actually get to attaching the skirts to the bodice. That would be really nice. Um, We'll see what I can accomplish. It is this is almost midnight, so I'm gonna mess around with this a little bit, but after I get some dinner, because I haven't done that yet. Let's do that. So the last thing I did that night was pin together, sew, and gather the three rectangular skirt layers before passing out while watching copious amounts of Seinfeld. October 10th. Hello? It is currently two days later. Okay, so I fully intended to record yesterday on my birthday, and then whenever it came down to actually uh, working on this and recording and getting it done, the thing is that I didn't. So we are still exactly where we were whenever I gave you the update the other night, which means that this is Monday. I need to have this video done at least by Thursday. There's still quite a lot to do. In fact, I have this whole left side of this list. That is everything that I have to still do to get this dress done. I think first I'm gonna start off by working on these sleeves because honestly they're perplexing me a little bit just because they're kind of one layer and I've never attached sleeves that way before and I also need to figure out the little cuff situation. Fingers crossed that I don't have to undo all these little basting stitches because I really don't feel like it. Hopefully this goes well. So to begin finishing and attaching the sleeves, I measured two 11.5 by four inch strips of green fabric using a birthday card envelope as a straight edge because remember, I still don't know where that ruler is. And after cutting that out along with some canvas to stiffen the cuff, I ironed the seam allowance in the center down all fancy like so these pieces are ready to eat the gathered sleeves. <laughs> Speaking of gathering the sleeve, that's what I did next and it was unpleasant because I was using really cheap thread that made it really difficult to move the gathers on it. So unpleasant that I forgot to get footage of that. But I did it. You can trust me because you can see it right there. So after I trapped the sleeve in the cuff like a diver trapped in the Marianas Trench, by that I mean pinned it, I carefully sewed up the sleeve cuffs with all the grace and precision of a 1980s drummer performing a LASIK eye surgery. And once those were done, I performed my first ever French scene, French scene, French scene, which is where you pin wrong sides together, so flip inside out, so and then flip inside out again, leaving you with this delicate little encased seam. Colleen Atwood, I'll have your job now. Um, sorry about that, Colleen. Learning new sewing techniques just makes me feel really powerful. Um. Anyways, after that I pressed all my seams and pinned and gathered both sleeves onto the outer layer of my bodice. And after that... We have pumpkin sleeves now. I'm sorry, Tiger. That's scary. Hold on. That was just so chaotic that I knocked an encyclopedia of herbal medicine off of the shelf. Oh no. Okay, a very important update. I'm going to be watching Adam Savage build a lightsaber for the next hour. 
But perhaps slightly more important than that is how I'm actually going to attach the lining layer to the outer layer, because I don't know how I'm gonna do that yet. So the problem I'm running into here is because this sleeve is just one layer and I normally attach sleeves to my lining layer as well and then clean it up, attach it to the cuff, you know the whole biz. I'm not able to hide the seam between the lining and this sleeve as easily, so I don't know exactly how I'm going to do that. I might have to go in and like manually fold this in and then basically top stitch it or something like that. I don't want to do that, but it looks like that might be what I have to do just to make sure that I don't have like an ugly raw edge in here. I do like the inside of my garments to be like kind of clean, contrary to me being a chaotic being. Let me try that and see if it works. Okay. Oh, but first I am going to quickly go in and attach these at the neckline and then I'm gonna do that. So attach them at the neckline, I did. I began by pinning right sides together, which looks like this, and tried to stitch it down as carefully as possible because I have a talent for creating lumpy necklines. You go into the doctor for a physical and he's like, is that a goiter or just something cura sewed? Because we can't really tell. Sewing actually went pretty well. So then I was on to executing my lining layer plans. I trimmed the excess fabric around the inside of the sleeve and pinned down a very narrow seam allowance on the edge of the lining layer, which looked like this. So then I stitched that up and took care of any leftover messiness with my favorite crafting material. Fire! Albeit a little too enthusiastically, but after that it actually looked pretty clean. So then it was time to move on to attaching the skirt layers. So I began by cutting down the back center of the circle skirt layers, only, um, oh, no. so I French seemed to fix that, and while cutting the next layer, oh my god, I did. I can't believe myself. So it took multiple tries to fix that hole because I was just being really lazy about it, which is coincidentally also probably what that 80s drummer was thinking whenever he was performing the LASIK eye surgery. And then I finally cut the lining skirt layer. It is. It's that easy. Let's attach the skirts. But first, for my own sanity, I took a cat break and a cucumber salad break. And speaking of trying to retain your sanity, Viserys is not doing too well on this week's episode of House of the Dragon. Here's your spoiler warning, cowards. I mean, he's not doing as bad as that other guy, but he's definitely unwell. Viserys got one of the coolest scenes in the entire show, and then they did the Gus Fring thing with him, which is actually pretty sick. Also, how did he lose his eye? Are they trying to draw a parallel between the king and Amon? No, because be, they both have missing eyes now, and that's kind of the end of the comparison, but you know what I mean. It also took me far too long to realize that Aegon is married to his sister. Speaking of marrying your blood relatives. Actually, can you send me that meme? This is a really good meme. <laughs> it's three people. Oh, what am I doing here? Uh, right. While I had my dinner break, I pinned the skirt and the bodice layers together, sewed them up, and trimmed the excess fabric. Hi, it has a skirt. Look. So to attach this last lining layer to the rest of this and make it make sense, you're supposed to like turn it inside out and then pin it like, hold on, like this, like it's a little burrito or a strange worm. Let's try this. So I pinned the bodice to the lining in strange worm form and stitched it together, accidentally making this sound whenever I almost knocked my tripod over. It kind of sounds like some weird species of tree frog. These shots aren't really necessary, but, um, cinema? Have you heard of it? After sewing that, I released the dress from its burrito prison. I can't believe this actually worked. And then ironed down my seams. I also trimmed down the skirt so that all the layers were one length, and then it was time to hem all of those layers. Only, just kidding, I didn't feel like doing that, so I just worked on the back closure. I wanted a lace-up style back closure for this dress, much like these, so I pinned the seam allowance of the back panels up clean, and then slowly added in loops that I cut from the hemmed edge of the green tablecloth that a cord could lace through. This was really tedious and took a while, but in the end I think it came out looking pretty clean. So I stitched that seam up, actually beginning to care how my stitches look, and after that I pinned and sewed up the back of the individual skirt layers, pinning the green lining to itself and the four layers of organza and white layer together. After that I cleaned up the skirt seams with some fire, as well as the edges of my loop closures to avoid fraying. Then I cut the entire hemmed edge of the green tablecloth to use as lacing so that I could try it on. Yikes. Hello, this is 3AM Kira coming to you from my living room floor. So I just tried on the dress and I love pretty much everything about it. It is going far better than I expected, except for one teeny tiny little detail. And that is, it does not quite 
fit. It is actually too big. I feel like I want to have the bodice part very fitted so that it is actually a flattering silhouette, not so much you know, my childhood Halloween costume. Whenever the back closure wasn't hemmed, it pretty much fit me perfectly, so I figured that if I hemmed it a little bit and then added these loops, if I laced it tight, it would give me a nice tight fit because that's how it fit whenever it wasn't hemmed. And alas, I did all this work and it did not have that effect at all. It is very, very loose. Even with me wearing an actual bra, which I also expected to fill up space a little bit. Mildly discouraging. So my original plan was to finish up all of the ribbons and the trims and the little like pumpkin embellishments tomorrow night because I figured that would be easy enough and just finish the entire dress tonight and have a finished dress that I can just embellish. Uh, unfortunately, I have this situation to figure out tomorrow night as well. I really hate to rip this apart because I think it actually came out looking really nice, but also it doesn't fit me and it kind of makes me look like I'm wearing a moo moo. I'm just gonna have to bite the bullet tomorrow night and do a little bit of seam ripping. I'll see you tomorrow night. Hello, it's the next night and it is so very late. I spent the day editing, so I'm a little behind on this and there's still more to do than I would like. I wanna go to bed. That's not gonna happen. To-do list. Fix the back closure, make big poofy bows for the hips and the sleeves and the back and all that jazz, and then hand sew on said poofy bows. I don't even know how I'm gonna make the poofy bows, I'll be honest. I didn't plan well enough this week. What can I say? It's just part of my brand. Anyways, we had better get started. First, we need to seam rip all of this out and I'm going to do that while I eat dinner and watch Seinfeld. See, here's the thing. My scheduling wasn't awful this week. It's just the fact that I made that mistake last night with the back closure. That is the thing that did me in. If that went well, then I just have to make a couple of like little bows and ribbons tonight and it wouldn't be a big deal. But instead, oh geez, oh boy. <laughs> I was overreacting a little bit. Yes, I did stay up till the wee hours of the morning, but the work itself was not that bad. I just seam ripped out the edge of that closure and teed Easily folded in the seam allowance even more, then repinned all of the loops and stitched both of those seams back up. Then it was on to making the ribbons, so I just cut several thick strips out of the same fabric I used for the lining, which was somewhat challenging because the executive producer was trying to actually take my scissors. I have no idea why she wanted them so badly, but this was certainly an obstacle. I didn't feel like finishing the edges on the giant strips, so I just burned them with my favorite sewing supply, fire, and in a misguided attempt to make the ribbons look curly like in the sketch listen it sounds crazy and it might not work but this is tactically all plastic and plastic melts i'm just gonna give this a shot this is supposed to work if you're using actual ribbon and not a tablecloth so yeah it didn't work but it's fine i'll probably just replace these ribbons at some point but these will do for now anyways after i had burned and prepped all my bows i sewed a little strip around the middle to secure them and then they were all ready to be attached so i just pinned and hand sewed each of them on sewed the back ribbon to the lacing so the placement was correct and and trimmed the excess. And with that, there it is. She is now finally done. And you guys are gonna see what it looks like on right now in the reveal. And now right, it's reveal time. Yeah. Guys, oh, get up. How'd you get so lit up? Oh, gosh, I'll get up. How did you get that style? Golly gee, when you turn those leaders on. Oh, with me, got to put my cheaters on. Jeepers, creepers, where'd you get those creepers? Oh, those are weepers. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video and you like what you see, I do have a Patreon that you can support. And a very special thank you goes to my current patrons, especially my executive producers. Including the one that is currently attacking my microphone cord, please stop. Owlian, Bean the Bread, Bobo McFo, Gravity Drop, Hypnos, India, Jessica Dilling, Katie, Michael Twy Cross, I am so sorry, Panda Pie 365, Reflings. <sighs>
I'm sorry. Silver, Sweet Winter Garden, Welly Kelly, and Will Schmidt. If you want to support what I do here, especially as I branch out into bigger projects, please consider becoming a member of my Patreon. The link will be in my description. It's just a couple of bucks, and when you support me, I really appreciate it. Thank you, patrons. <laughs> I just don't know what to do anymore. Whenever you make several clones of yourself, they don't tell you that those clones are going to try to take over your YouTube channel. I just needed some help with all the work for the month of October, and they just keep butting in. They won't let me do my job. I'm so sick of this.